Hello, welcome to Studio Pixel. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to use the PRA particle system in 3ds Max. Now, you can create the PRA particle system from the Create menu, Create tab, and under Geometry, you can see like, the particle system exactly as we have already done for the spray. Now, here you can find the PRA. Now, you can click and drag the PRA just like I have already created my PRA over here. I haven't changed the basic settings so that I can uh, show you what are the important factors are there. So let's start with. Now PRA is a kind of a particle system. If you create that PRA within your scene and hit play, you see nothing will happen. Uh, exactly the opposite uh, of the spray that you have already learned. Now PRA isn't going to create any particle system because the PRA is actually an open object based emitter now this is very important and also interesting now previously i have uh, if you see the spray if you click and drag and if you hit play the button and you can see immediately you can see the particles from an emitter but in this case pra doesn't emit any kind of an, a particle system or any particles because the reason is as it is a object based emitter so if i want my object to emit the particles then only i have to use this particular uh, particle system that is named pra so let's start with to apply this particular uh, pra particle system with the link with the uh, teapot so select this go to the modify panel and you can see the pick object just click on to that and select your object to be emitted the particles. Now immediately you can see that the particles are actually getting emitted from the particular surface base. Now the first formation, that particle formation type is over entire surface. Now that means the entire surface will actually create the particle system, uh, the, sorry, the particles. And the other options are like along visible edges, at all vertices, at distant points, face centers. And the most interestingly, you can use the sub objects level also. That is very interesting one because that I'm going to use it right now. So select that and uh, for creating the sub object level, you have to convert your model into an editable poly object. So right click, convert to editable poly. And there, if you go to vertex mode or maybe any other mode, the polygon or, or any, any, any one. So you can select that and just switch off it and come to that and all at all vertices and also use that you check that you selected sub object immediately you can see that particle has been shifted to over here the reason is that the particle is now getting emitted from the selected vertices that i have already converted and selected so 3ds max actually can remember that selection and that's a very unique feature of the of this particular software so so we can use the entire surface also and we can actually create a very cool a cool effect of that now if you uh, going back to the from all vertices to entire surface don't uh, don't forget to check off that you select it sub object because otherwise this is actually getting contradicted because you have already said so selected sub object and also you are saying that entire subsurface uh, sorry entire surface so it's kind of an uh, contra self contradictory so you have to switch off that now that's great now if you play again you can see that the entire object is actually entire surface is actually getting emitted and the surface particles are emitting so now if you come down to that you can see the viewport display this is a kind of similar to the you know the spray uh, or any other particle system that in the viewport you what you want to see you want to see a dot a tick some mesh what kind of Though this is nothing, uh, this, this has no connection at all uh, with the render because your render is not going to be affected by this. So if you want to hit mesh, you can actually have a mesh particle if you have selected something like that or maybe a dot or maybe a tick. So it's up to you. I uh, generally prefer to stick to the tick because that is a very, you know, uh, make your viewport very light and also you can have the... Uh, right amount of uh, right kind of a simulation that you are actually getting so now the number of particle systems is absolutely same as the sphere uh, sorry the spray and that what is exactly amount that you are getting you know uh, in your render this is the particle system the percentage of the particle system that will be only shown in the viewport nothing related with the render now this is quite interesting 
for the particle quantity now one option is use rate another option is the use total and what is the difference between use rate and use total so for before we are actually uh, making you understand what is a use rate and use total i should like to um, actually uh, concentrating on this particular section that is where you are actually uh, setting the starting and the ending point of your emission of the particles so here i am starting uh, my starting emit start will from zero frame and it will be end at 30 now from this particular range of time i will either use a rate of emission that means that each and every frame there a certain amount of particle will be released or i can use an entire number of a total number of particles that means within this 30 frame the total number of particle will be emitted that is 100 so that means now my total number of particles are getting fixed here i am actually freezing the number of particles that will be emitted per frame so right now if it is a 30 frame and per frame you are actually decreasing uh, sorry uh, emitting 10 particles then the actual particle the number of particles the total number of particles which will be actually been emitted that will be 30 into 10 that is 300 now as now i'm getting back to that percentage of particle now as this is my first frame as my emission will be starting from zero my first frame will actually use rate that means how many particles will be emitted 10 particles will be emitted on the frame zero because my emit will start at zero right now i'm in at zero so now it should come 10 particles but right now i'm seeing only one the reason is that i have set the percentage of particle of the viewport display to 10 percent so 10 percent of the 10 is one so that's why it is showing only one particles now if i put that particle uh, the percentage of particle to 100 percent you'll see you're actually getting a number of 10 number of particles 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and other one will be somewhere else let's see yes it's hidden inside of that so that's why so these are the 10 particles that we are actually talking about so it's up to you that you want to you know just get a glimpse of your uh, particle amount of particles and all and uh, either or maybe you can use a very low number of particles uh, to see the effect so now uh, here the particle motion the next section here you can actually you know if increase the increase or decrease the speed of the particles that will be emitted and also the diversion or the variation of the speed diversion means it's actually how many degrees will be you know it's coming from a particular angle from the surface you know the normals and all for that for this particular phase and if you don't want to do that you can actually uh, zero out divergence so that it will be exactly along with the normals but if you increase the speed it will you know blow away the particle and if you decrease the speed to a very low level then you will see the particles are slowly very slowly emitting so this is a very kind of a nice effect that can you can create at the uh, it may be you know you want to add to your scene so right now let's see let's do these things increasing the particle and i also increase the use rate rate so now you can see oh something like that okay so now i'm just have to come to this point that my emit start is zero my emit stop is 30 so after 30 frame practically there is no particle is actually emitting but then why this is these are getting you know dissolved or maybe died because your particles life is 30 so if you want something longer so you have to use a longer amount of time so you can see this it's getting in getting out and after that it stopped uh, emitting but it will be still in the display I don't want the life to be 100 I want my life to be 30 but I don't want to stop the emission so 
what will happen is I have to increase my emit stop button now if you increase play now you can see the entire surface is actually emitting the you know uh, the particles and it is continuing uh, emitting the particles till I uh, till I put it to a as I put it to the hundred frames emit stop so this is a very interesting one uh, so you can actually practically control the emission start and also the emission stop of your um, particles so moving forward great now I can uh, make a variation change a variation of the life also so that it will be not exactly the very you know uh, kind of a uh, systematic or maybe you know to to make it some vary in the life life cycle of the of these particles also so every every time I've already told you in the last uh, um, tutorial if you have noticed that that whenever you are actually seeing a variation under any particular parameter that means that variation is belongs to that particular parameter now if you see your variation of speed because it's under the speed now it's a variation of life under the life as as it is under the life so this is very an interesting one now let's move on to the next segment that is a particle size which is uh, really uh, important because uh, if you hit render you will actually see the exact size of your particles now this is very important now if you increase your size over here you can see directly over here not exactly on your viewport because the ticks doesn't actually you know resemblance to the size so it's very important that you uh, I mean check your size properly but yes if you have convert this particular viewport display to mesh then you can see your objects are can be visible because your mesh objects are set which I will come the, uh, the particle type section as a triangle you can see standard particles triangles so I'm not going to uh, uh, put you indulge into that particle system so uh, for, sorry particle types so first of all and now you can increase the size and you can see you can actually see the exact amount of the size now it's very very important that you put your size accordingly otherwise if you increase your size too much without uh, checking this because in the text you cannot see that you can land up uh, in a very big mess because uh, it can be way over the size that you have actually thought say uh, you have sized it five I'm sorry it's the last render and you can see this it's becoming a very huge one so it's up to you which one which exact uh, size you want you can check them out uh, while making a uh, simple kind of render now this is a, a really interesting this is a variation of the size so how what kind of variation you exactly want so you can set up before now grow for and fade for this is a really really interesting one now you can I'm just uh, taking another object for creating this I'm just uh, using it plain fine now I'm just uh, creating another particle system Pierre and I'm going to use this time this particular plane so over into surface uh, mesh now this grow for for grow for and for just let me turn off this part yeah so so now I have actually put everything onto exactly like the same but just to increase the size to maybe 10 and the particle tie from standard particle triangle to maybe a cube now you can see one thing is pretty interesting uh, okay life maybe from 30 yes my life is uh, the particles life now you can see this is quite interesting that the initial size of the particles are quite less then they started to grow and then at the end of their life cycle they are also getting you know uh, 
smaller now the reason behind this is this particular this these two grow for our and fade for parameters now these are the one which is actually you know uh, putting these particles into this kind of this sort of a, a size differences this is really interesting and very important also because you don't want to if you don't want any kind of a grow for thing i mean i don't want my particle should be uh, from the start it should be on its final size that means the uh, 3.4 mm oh, sorry not 3.4 mm this is a speed size yeah 10 mm this is the size but here as i have put a grow for value that means it will take 10 frames to grow into its final size and the same will go for the fade for so this is very important now i don't want that grow for but i want that particles my particles to be fade off slowly like it will start decreasing the size and then slowly they will dissolve or off so grow for value will be zero so whenever they are actually creating or emitting you can see they are actually in their full size but at the end what is happening is they are actually getting decreased inside and slowly they are actually lost their life so this is the growth for and fade for this is quite interesting one if you want to create any kind of a uh, i mean uh, effect where you want to be dissolve your uh, you no know, particles at the end you can do it in in a very gradual manner with this particular um, parameter so this is very uh, interesting one now after that you can set the uniqueness by uh, increasing the seed new kind of different kind of seed to make it a different kind of a, you know variety of the unique uh, portion type of the particles from emitting from so the next thing is the particle type this is really really interesting the first part the first uh, type is the standard particles where you are actually having the standard shapes or maybe geometries like triangle cube spatial facing constant tetra sphere six pointers a lot of other things now these are all really really uh, great now, but again depends on your requirement of the thing. So I'm not just going to give you any kind of example because this is absolutely a basic one I just wanted to go through all the parameters over here. So Now one the second option is the meta particles and the moment you hit the meta particles It will be you know come to a very different way. I mean, it's absolutely a you know a, it's not exactly like the standard particles meta particles generally used for that uh the liquid or you know or the, uh, the liquid metal or maybe kind of a you know gluey kind of effect you can actually get from this meta particle option now for meta particles you actually okay standard object put a sphere and you have to actually increase the size of your geometry or maybe the particles and also the rate and then only actually you can see the use of the meta particles as such okay great you can increase now the variation a bit got it one connected sorry now evaluation coarseness is very important this is this is what exactly the size and from the viewport and the render you can see this gluey things it's, it's, it's kind of a liquid thick liquid stuff it's coming out from that particular surface so this is about uh, this is all the meta particles is all about now you can automatically uh, you know evaluate the uh, the coarseness of that meta particle or you can make it you know uh, ac according to your own you can you know reduce the coarseness in the view oh my goodness if you decrease it it can be an unstable one 
so it's very very important that you use it quite properly now you can increase the value or decrease the value for the render render it will be different and for the uh, you know viewport it to be different but you can actually leave it to the automatic coarseness if you really don't want to mess up with it so this is uh, coarseness and next thing is you have to use object fragments and instance geometry i will definitely like to show you the instance geometry because it is really really fantastic one now i can create small object and I select this particle I turn on the instance geometry and also set it the instancing parameter pick object and oops the reason the reason is the same now yeah I told you that the size of your oh my goodness okay let me handle this okay the size of your particles has to be very very carefully handled you can see i have already in increased my size for the meta particles but right now i'm using an instance geometry so this is an absolutely different thing so i have to get back to my size of one now still you can see oops yeah. okay okay i can understand fine now it's going back to the bounding box okay now you can see the huge number of particles are out there I don't want them exactly so what I will do first of all even my percentage of particle is 10% but it's, still it's very heavy for me so I'll just in, decrease my use rate fine now it's happy oh great so you can see this I can uh, use the instancing uh, geometry also so whenever you are actually creating this kind of effect so you have to be very very careful what kind of a particle type you are using and also what is the value of your particles that are, that are actually getting emitted from the surface and all and also your viewport is very important that's why don't push to the mesh easily until unless you are very much confident about your system performance and all so please stick to the ticks if you need any kind of a preview just hit the um, you know uh, render and you can see what is exactly result because render is showing the ultimate output of your uh, you know scene so you, ha you should see the render output so you don't uh, even rely on the viewport results even if your you know percentage of particles are 100% and also you have the using the uh, you know uh, very good graphic card unless you have a very good uh, you know graphic card configuration so let's move on to the next section that is the rotation and collision now i i'm not actually going to uh, connect this because this is absolutely connected with the the self collision and all and also you can uh, use the spin time but for the basic things you don't need to uh, worry about this these these factors now just for your sake of your knowledge just if you want your particles to be inter collision that means one particle will definitely collide with the other ones you can enable this otherwise you can switch it off and I haven't actually introduced any any particular uh, you know, uh, any particular uh, 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 physical related object like gravity or, or deflector or something like that. that that I will do it on the next uh, tutorial which I will cover with the, uh, on the particle system uh, which will with the super spray so okay fine 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 now these things a bubble motion particle spawn and low surface not exactly uh into the basic part right now as you are in a very basic mode you don't have to worry about it right now i will definitely cover this up but that will need another entire uh, tutorial or entire video for that otherwise it will be too longer and we might miss the main basic points of that to understand what is the um, 
uh, PRI is all about. Now, why I am actually avoiding this because these are very much common uh, particle parameter for other pa pa particles also. If you see say, sup uh, super spray and if you go to the uh, modify panel, you can see that particle uh, the bubble motion particle spawn loads of presets object motion inheritance rotation and collision these are all though the particle type and particle generation are also the same so i will just uh, hold on for this uh, uh, super spray i'm not going to discuss about this but as uh, we have actually introduced the rest of the things i think that will do for you okay fine so uh, hope you understand this and enjoy this tutorial thank you very much please subscribe to our youtube channel and also like us on facebook and follow us on twitter and uh, please wait for a few days and uh, we'll come back with the super spray and the rest of